All right, so if you watched my last uh, video, you have uh, some basic code here that can run the harvester roll and um, loops through your creeps. And if it's a uh, harvester, it will actually execute the harvester code. Uh, unfortunately, this isn't very yeah, useful in its current state. So we're going to keep uh, going through the tutorial code and building off of this. But uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new file for um, the upgrader role. You'll find this in the second um, section of the tutorial code. Um, so I'm just going to create a new file here, save this guy as uh, JavaScript and role.upgrader. And if you've watched my last video, you'll see that there's a lot of similarity between the harvester role and the upgrader role. Um, sort of very similar logic here. If the creep has energy, it's going to... Uh, well, if the creep has no energy, it's going to go over and find and harvest from an energy source. If it has energy, it's going to go ahead and upgrade the controller. There is a little bit of a problem here uh, in that it's it will only harvest once and then start upgrading which is the most efficient when there's inventory space remaining but we'll be able to fix that uh, in the next couple of videos um, the next thing I'm going to do is actually go here into the tutorial code and copy over the new main um, but this new main includes uh, this new breakdown for uh, different types of creep rolls so when these creeps spawn, we're going to give them an initial memory that will dictate what role they are, either harvester, upgrader, or builder. Uh, you'll find the builder code in section 3 of the tutorial code. Um, I'm going to go ahead and create a file for that as well here. Um, new file. And builder is very similar to the code for... Um, the upgrader and harvester. So you'll start to see it, a lot of similarity and that's because code for the most part is patterns. Um, but instead of copying the same code no over and over again, we want to start to move this towards um, you know functions that could be called in prototypes, which we'll explain in a few more videos. Anyway, here's our builder code. Um, and this is a fix for uh, only harvesting one time from the energy source. So it's this concept of states. In the tutorial, they have um, this memory state called building. Um, so I'm actually going to change this up and make it called working. Because um, that is one that will make a little bit more sense um, for all roles rather than just uh, the builder role. Um, sort of to standardize terminology here. So here's the builder role code that we copied over. We're also going to need to go ahead and get the um, the runner logic for the role builder. And then update the imports here at the top. So if you see these guys, so role harvester is uh, going to import a JavaScript file with the name role.harvester. So over here on the left, it's this uh, JavaScript file. And what this file is going to be doing is exporting uh, this role harvester. So role harvester is an object with the following function under the name run. So now in the main, when we do role builder, Dot run and we pass it a creep which is the parameter in I believe it was harvester yeah it will start to execute um, the logic within this file so that's how you can uh, separate your code and your functions into multiple files and uh, have them be linked together um, next we're actually going to jump all the way down to section 4 of the tutorial code and take a look at the uh, main file here. 
this is going to add a little bit of code for um, managing spawning. So I'm going to actually just go ahead and copy that over. So cleans old creeps from memory. So if you watched my first tutorial uh, video, you saw the documentation where game.creeps is a data structure that contains um, keys that are names or strings and values that are uh, creep objects. So what this code is going to do is for every um, key in that array of creep objects, it's going to test to see if there actually is a creep spawned in the game. If there's not, it's going to free up that memory that's been allocated because that creep no longer exists. So that's what this first code up here does. And right now it's set to run every tick, which is fine in the beginning, but later we'll probably optimize this guy. Um, next thing is this. We're going to create this variable called harvesters. Harvesters is going to be a filter, which is a lodash function. It, uh, we'll talk about lodash uh, functions in a future video, but for now, um, all you need to know is it passes a um, object or an array into the first variable, and then it, it performs some logic to sort of um, return true or false uh, with the this uh, condition. So what this is doing is it's going to pass the game.creeps object, and it's going to find every creep where the role is equal to harvester. And by doing that, we have um, an array full of uh, creep harvester creeps. And this console output is going to um, do har uh, harvesters.length. So harvesters is this array. And we're going to get the length of that array. And that's going to give us a count for how many there are. And this right here, if the number of harvesters in that array is less than two, it's going to go ahead and run the spawn logic. So it's going to get a name. So the name is going to be harvester in this case because it's a roll harvester. And this can be whatever you want it to be. And the game time. So this is a unique identifier because you can't have two creeps that have the same name. And we're going to assume this, this spawn logic is going to run one time per, per tick or per uh, game turn. So it's going to go ahead and give some console log output showing that it's going to spawn a harvester with this name. And let's go through the documentation and actually take a look at game.spawns, uh, spawn creep. So in the documentation, under structure spawn, we're going to look at function spawn creep and see what the parameters are. So the first one is a body type, then we have a name, and then we have additional options. So the body type can be composed of these guys right here. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up in a new tab. But here's the API for a creep. And uh, looks like a reset. Here we go. So here's all the different body types that a creep can have and its cost. So a spawn by default is going to have 300 energy available to it without using extensions or other um, the ways to uh, put energy available into the room. So we go over here to um, store. Oh, it won't show there. There. Let's go here. Okay. So this capacity is 300. And one thing it says is uh, spawns auto regenerate a little amount of energy each tick. So it's one energy per tick, um, maxing out at 300 because that's the capacity of a, a single spawn. So this gives you always a little bit of energy to work with, even if um, your room's economy is sort of crashed. Anyway, going back over the parts. So we have 300 energy to work with, and we can select any of these types of parts. So a carry will do 50 energy, uh, well, 50 resource units of inventory space in our store object for 50 energy build cost. A work part is needed to harvest energy, uh, build structures, repair things, upgrade the controller, basically perform any of the, the actions that are going to be relevant in the beginning of the game. Uh, but it's 100 
per work part. And a work part is able to harvest two energy and use five energy per tick to build a structure or um, one energy per tick to upgrade a controller and get us uh, more points in that room. Um, once we spawn a couple of these guys, we'll take a look at how the mechanics of controllers. And the last is, uh, the last that's going to be relevant right now is move. Uh, its cost is 50, and what it does is it removes two fatigue uh, per tick per move part. So work uh, creates two fatigue every move operation. So if a creep has uh, a work part and a move part, it's able to move once per tick, even if there's not a road. A road uh, allows uh, less fatigue generation per uh, work and uh, utilized carry part. And you'll see that in a second once we start spawning these units. Um, so what this is going to do is game.spawn spawn creep with a work part, a carry part, and a move part. And the name that's been set right here. And this, this starting memory. So memory is one of the... Um, Structure spawn, spawn creep options. So down here, we can give it a memory. We can specifically um, state what types of energy structure should be used to uh, create the creep. Um, here's a function to test whether or not it's possible to spawn this creep. And we can also choose which direction uh, from the spawn the creep will move once it's spawned into the world. Um, this is sort of more advanced stuff though and I don't think we'll use it for a little while anyway so this is the code for our harvester spawning and um, this is just a little bit of flare to show what uh, is going on with the spawn and you'll see that in just a second so I'm going to save this guy and we're going to go back to this game world uh, so I'm going to actually select this room again and put down the spawn and the spawn one's fine. Anyway, so what this guy did was spawn two harvesters. So they have a work part, a carry part, and a move part. And their logic is just to go ahead and uh, refill this spawn. So that's what they did. But once it's full, uh, these guys don't really have any additional tasks because they can't put more than 300 energy in the spawn. So what we're going to do is actually go over here and try to get um, the upgrader logic to work. So the easiest way to do this in the beginning is just to copy the same logic over here and change this to upgrader. So upgrader here. And the role is upgrader. Spawn one will still be used. Um, upgrader. Um, and let's change this guy to be upgraders. All right. So there's some simple logic for upgraders. Let's go back over to the room, and you'll see that two upgraders have been spawned. But here's one of the problems with these guys. See, they only um, uh, got two energy, and then they immediately went over to start upgrading the controller. To make this more efficient, we want to make sure that they use that state system, uh, like the builder creeps, so that they can um, get a full inventory load before moving over to the controller. So we're going to actually implement that here. We're going um, to copy all the builder code as sort of a reference, and then we'll modify this guy. So if the creep is working and it has zero energy, so there's a couple states. The first state the creep's going to be in is false, because it's not going to have the value defined. So what it's going to do first is so we all the way down here, and it's going to evaluate creep memory working as false, and it's going to find a source. 
it's going to move to that source and mine it. Um, this right here, if the creep's not currently working, it's going to check to see if it still has inter, uh, inventory space. If it doesn't, it's going to set its working mode to true. Um, this code, if it's currently working, or in this case upgrading the controller, it's going to check to see if there's no energy remaining, because if there's no energy remaining, it's going to change its state to uh, harvest again. So what we're going to do is put this code into the working phase. delete this original code and when you control uh, S or save it's going to actually deploy uh, to the game um, directly because this file is uh, stored locally and the Steam client will actually push whatever changes you have saved locally uh, to the game so you see that the change and the creep now has an entire inventory load and it's also showing these uh, path visualizations. But anyway, here we go. It's starting to upgrade this controller. And what the controller does is at each new level, which uh, requires a lot of progress, like the first level is 200 to get to level 2, and then the next one is 45,000. So that one takes a little bit longer, and then each step is incrementally um, larger. But it starts to unlock these additional buildings we can use. So right now we've unlocked um, ramparts, walls, roads, and containers. Uh, next level will actually upgrade tower. So the game is boosted a little bit. Uh, you can see that we've already unlocked level 3, but typically this, this process can take uh, a few days in the game uh, to get several levels and start to unlock some of the new building types. Um, Anyway, so in the next video, we're going to go over um, some spawn logic for the builders, as well as uh, structure placement, which will be manual in the beginning. But I'll go over what some of these other buildings do, like the tower, container, and uh, extensions, and show you how to implement those in your code. Anyway, thanks for watching. Leave comments down in the description. Uh, if you have specific questions about this episode or uh, want to see things in the future, thanks for